Like many totally normal people, I'm often kept awake at night by one persistent question. What would happen if Hitman's Agent 47 were a goose? Well, I'm sure you'll be happy to hear we can all finally rest easy thanks to the unrelentingly charming and wonderfully absurd Untitled Goose Game. The answer turns out to be a magical kind of foul play that replaces murder with merciless annoyance. The only real downside about this ridiculous and fun game is that it ended far sooner than I wanted it to. You play as a goose, but not just any goose. You're a goose who is also a total asshole. Okay, that's probably most geese, but this particular goose seems hell-bent on running around a lovely English village, honking, flapping its wings, and clearing off a handwritten checklist full of mischievous goose tasks. Items on that list can range from stealing food for a picnic, to nabbing a gardener's keys off his belt, to mercilessly bullying a child for seemingly no reason. All of these pointlessly malevolent goals are as weird as they are clever. Being a jerk of a goose is just a ton of fun, and it's hard to describe the strange pleasure elicited from letting out triumphant victory honks after successfully soaking a poor old gardener with a sprinkler. While some tasks are puzzles with specific solutions, others thrive off of flexibility, improvisation, and creative problem solving, with multiple paths to success that aren't always so straightforward. It can be a tad frustrating at times to precisely grab objects. And again, a goose grabbing a full-size pumpkin with its beak doesn't exactly sound like the most elegant thing in the world anyway. But incorrectly highlighting objects could sometimes waste precious seconds, causing my carefully laid gardener traps to go to waste. Thankfully, a delightful lack of consequence allows you to take your time, mess up, and experiment as you refine your bill-based terror. What really ties this downy duvet together is its music. Much of the time there isn't any playing at all, but the piano-driven score expertly fades in and out to match the action on screen. It lends an air of Benny Hill-style ridiculousness to chases, and always seemed to mischievously creep in just as I started to sneak up on an unsuspecting target. <laughs> it's used with a light touch, but to incredible effect. Once you complete most of the checklist for an area, a path to the next one will open up, complete with new tasks and unsuspecting victims. Unfortunately, this goosey adventure is pretty dang short. It only took me about an hour and a half to play through the five main areas of this quaint village, and roughly that again to complete most of the more challenging post-credits bonus checklists. While I undoubtedly loved every second of it, this English village ultimately felt like a single level of a larger game that didn't materialize. I wish my goose could have soared even further to terrorize new locales. Being given control of this feathered menace and armed with a list of hilarious, mean tasks to complete is some of the most fun I've had with a game all year. I would have gladly spent hours longer playing Untitled Goose Game, but the charming design of its world and the clever challenges within it still had me laughing, smiling, and eagerly honking the whole way through. For more slick indie games on Switch, check out our reviews of Sayonara Wild Hearts and Katana Zero. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.